In the beginning, there was nothing but infinite potential. Then, from zero came one, and the universe was born. Combining one second and zero second, we formed the Dictum world. What comes next? Father, would a car fly on the sky after ten years? Would I have been to the space? What would our world become? I can't tell you these secrets for now, but the future is full of wonder. You can explore the future through it by yourself if you want to know the secrets of future. Rely on the wisdom of pioneers. current buzzwords in the tech sector is this whole idea of the metaverse, the idea of a unified virtual world where people can play games and socialize and build new economic systems and create virtual property. The next decade will be an intelligent one, changing every aspect of our lives. Food, living, travel, health, how we purchase, how city operate, and how countries flourish. Data and digitization are key enablers to climate action and climate performance. They help model, visualize, monitor, plan, and optimize. The automobile revolution is characterized by electrification, low carbon, intelligence, connectivity, and sharing. These are our thoughts on the future of ICT innovation. The development of the ICT industry over the past decade has provided unprecedented tools to change the world. We believe that the next decade will be a golden age of ICT innovation. Hello, everyone. I'm Yuan Xiaoshan. Welcome to Huawei's Intelligent World 2030 Forum. The world of science fiction gives us all kinds of expectations and participations about the future. In the real world, technology is gradually turning those ideas into reality. Digital technology is developing at lightning speed for industry innovation, providing economic efficiency, and also promoting the well-being of humanity. In this forum, we will start from the need of human development to explore how technology will drive changes in the world, and also what new modes of living will emerge. We have invited futurists, industry leaders, and also think tank experts to share their ideas of the future with us. Our first guest is the renowned American futurist and the pop science author Steven Johnson. Mr. Johnson has been called the Darwin of technology and also was named one of the top 10 brands of the digital future by the UK's Perspective magazine. Now we will connect to Mr. Johnson in the United States to hear his idea about the future. Hello, my name is Steven Johnson. I'm a writer whose work has studied the past and future of innovation. 
in books like Where Good Ideas Come From, in television series like How We Got to Now and Extra Life. Today, I want to talk to you about why I'm so excited about the future, what some of us have started to call the exponential age. Now, for the past three decades or so, we've seen the impact of exponential changes on our computers, thanks to Moore's Law. We're all walking around with supercomputers in our pockets that cost less than $1,000 and have the processing power of a machine that used to be the size of a refrigerator and cost millions. But I would argue that we're only just now entering a true exponential age where all of society is transformed and improved thanks to exponential change in our technology. And the three macro trends that illustrate this are the dramatic advances in our ability, one, to sequence our genome, two, in solar panel efficiency, and three, in machine learning. Now, in the 1990s, it cost $10 billion and took 10 years to sequence a single human genome. By 2007, the cost of analyzing your DNA had dropped to under a million dollars and took a matter of weeks. Today, we can sequence a person's entire genome in an hour for less than $100. Similarly, the price per watt of solar modules has dropped from $100 per watt to around 10 cents a watt since 1976. Now, in machine learning, we've seen some incredible examples of exponential advances in recent years, including some chess algorithms that start with only the most basic rules of chess, zero pre-programmed knowledge of chess strategy. And by the end of a single day, the algorithms had become the most advanced chess players on the planet, using a completely bottom-up approach to learning. They played 44 million games in a single day, while the average human chick grandmaster might play only 100,000 games over the course of his or her career. Now, our brains have a difficult time grasping the magnitude of change that exponential growth makes possible. The advances we're starting to see in fields like genetics or machine learning are the equivalent of an automobile that used to cost $40,000 with a top speed of 150 miles per hour three decades ago, now costing a fraction of a penny and traveling at the speed of light. That rate of change would be ludicrous with a mechanical object like an automobile, but with the information technology, it's not just possible, it's the reality. What all these technological developments mean in practice is that over the next few decades, we will have ubiquitous access to genetic knowledge, clean energy, and artificial intelligence. Sharing those resources at costs that are almost too cheap to meter will usher in profound changes in how we live and how we work. Now, I'm not gonna discuss the trends in solar power because we're focused more on information technology here, but just think about how many problems over the course of human history have come from energy sources being scarce and expensive. A world where energy is incredibly cheap and renewable is going to be a very different place. In terms of the information technologies, the most dramatic impact I think will be on our health. Human life expectancy doubled over the past century, but most of the changes came from reducing childhood mortality. The next revolution, powered by machine learning and the genomic revolution, will expand what we call health span, not just lifespan, allowing people to live at full capacity into their hundreds and beyond. Immunotherapies will finally allow us to win the war on cancer. The mRNA technology that produced a COVID vaccine in record time will be used to train the immune system to destroy what we call senescent cells, which is one of the primary drivers of the aging process itself. Machine learning algorithms will revolutionize drug discovery and design because the algorithms can explore trillions of possible molecular combinations in just a matter of days a discovery process that would have taken human researchers years to do in the past. The changes from this health revolution will be profound ones. 
The whole idea of a retirement age will stop making sense when 65-year-olds can reasonably expect to live another 40 or 50 years at near peak mental and physical condition. Now, right now, one of the current buzzwords in the tech sector is this whole idea of the metaverse, the idea of a unified virtual world where people can play games and socialize and build new economic systems and create virtual property. But I think the more significant development may be what the computer scientist David Glartner called many years ago the mirror world, a complex simulation of our real world society running on future supercomputers. Today, we use complex multivariable simulations to model weather and climate systems. An entire planet of meteorological data is collected and analyzed and then used to simulate possible futures. Everything from whether it's going to rain on Tuesday to what will happen to the Gulf Stream in 50 years. Some of the most powerful computers in the world today are used for this purpose. But that kind of computational power is going to be abundant a decade from now, which will enable us to build even more complex simulations of human society, not just climate. These simulations will pull in all the available information, past and present, from all aspects of life. Health records, traffic patterns, economic activity, test scores by school district, crime data. And based on that just unimaginably rich trove of information, the simulations will both alert us to emerging patterns that we would have otherwise missed, but also, most importantly, it will allow us to run simulations of potential futures. So, for example, a city planner exploring the idea of converting a neighborhood to pedestrian only would be able to run a simulation to see the impact on economic activity or car traffic in in nearby neighborhoods. Police department will run virtual experiments to see the impact of different interventions on street crime or murder rates. The exponential revolution will also transform our creative work. Already, we're seeing works of art created by algorithms. These are some examples of machine learning artwork shared by a software designer named Hannah Johnston. This is a watercolor painting of Times Square made by a computer. (laughs) Another in the style of the post-impressionists. Another vaguely in the style of Art Nouveau. They're not bad. But the really interesting future is not about handing over creative control to the machines entirely, but instead embarking on something like a duet with them. Coming decades will be characterized by a golden age of collaboration between human and machine intelligence. Now, cognitive psychologists have long demonstrated that neurodiversity leads to more innovative thinking and problem solving. This is the importance of having different kinds of intelligence or intellectual backgrounds coming together to solve a problem or come up with a new idea. Algorithms will greatly expand the kind of neurodiversity that we're able to work with, not replacing human intelligence, but augmenting it. Imagine a lawyer sitting down to write a brief on an important new case. As she develops her argument, she draws on suggestions from a machine learning algorithm that's been trained on the entire corpus of every legal document ever entered into the public record. Similarly, architects will use intelligent software to generate new potential arrangements of physical space, like the molecular combinations of drug discovery. The machines won't create the final product or decision but they will suggest new variables or possibilities that the humans might not have come up with on their own. We've already had a hint of this with autocomplete tools in some of our software. 